Hey guys, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Look what I got behind me. Got a brand new truck here, 23 Ram 5500 with a Stellar T-Max um, service body with a crane, um, 7,500 pound lift capacity, 31 foot reach on this thing. It's loaded, it's got all the options on the bed. Um, the Ram is just a tradesman, but it's Cummins, full drive, crew cab, awesome truck. Let me know what you guys think, which is the best truck. Who's got the best heavy duty truck? Ford, Dodge, Chevy, you know, let's keep it, you know, up to the 5,500, you know, two ton mark, but comment below. Let me know what you guys think, who has the best trucks, pros and cons. Let's talk about it. But in this video, we're going to, I'm going to show you the actual process of what it takes to switch service trucks. You know, I've acquired a lot of tools in 17 years of wrenching, so it's a lot of stuff to take from one truck to the other and try to figure out, you know, where you're going to put everything. But this is how the process of how that works. So let's check it out. Got American Eagle onboard air, PTO on the truck to run the uh, hydraulics and everything. Inside of the cab, pretty basic tradesman, but look, we have a man shifter for the four wheel drive. I like that. But yeah, I this thing is so new. I haven't even. I've drove it down the road like five miles and that was it. I haven't put a license plate bracket that came with a bunch of extra wiring harnesses I have no idea what's for. I mean, that's a big wiring harness. Vehicle system interface module wiring kit, whatever that is. I gotta put some hubcaps on the front, but I think I'm gonna order some chrome simulators to go on there, I think that'd look nice. Of course, we gotta put some Sloan's decals on it, but First things first, I have got to get my running boards on. I ordered some running boards from realtruck.com because this thing is a jump to get in and out of there and I don't want to damage my seat. So let's get those on. There, running boards installed. These are the black cutlass running boards um, from realtruck.com. Uh, it took me about an hour and a half to put those babies on, but that's a lot better. Man, I tell you what, there is a lot of work to do to change service trucks. I mean, I have got a ton of stuff packed in this truck, all organized neat. You know, we've got organizers and foam cutouts and all kinds of stuff. But today's Friday, so my plan is I'm going to just take all the tools and just throw them into this truck. And then I'm going to take this truck home over the weekend and then we'll dial it in and organize everything, make it all real nice. Um, but we got a mount of vice. We got to mount uh, D-ring rails in the bed. Um, so those have got to be drilled and, and bolted in. Um, got to put a generator in the truck. Um, I've got to mount some a laptop mount inside. Um, I got a special new toy that I'm going to show you guys that I'm going to install for uh, adding CarPlay to this truck. So. Yeah, a lot of stuff to do, but the first things first, we're just gonna get some tools and swap them over into this truck. All right, so I wanna show you guys this new touch screen that my friends from CarPureide sent me. Um, funny story, I actually had this uh, touch screen in my Amazon shopping cart because I had intentions of installing it in my new Ram, um, but CarPureide just happened to send me an email and they wanted to send me this touch screen so I could do a review on it and I was already gonna buy it anyway, so let's check out this little toy. So here it is. 
this is going to allow me to have uh, Apple CarPlay in this truck that doesn't have it. It's just got the standard radio in there, but that allow me, I can Bluetooth this to the truck and then this will Bluetooth to my phone and then I can mount it up on the dash and that'll also, it also has a front facing camera that can raise up and down and rotate 350 degrees. And they're the only ones um, in the industry that has that feature, which I think is really cool. Um, I can also mount a backup camera. So I've got a, I ordered the backup camera for it too. So we can have some more um, viewing in the back because look, you got no rear view nothing so i need all the help i can get back in this thing up so let's get this thing out of the box and see what all it comes with all right so here we got the the 9.3 inch touchscreen car pure ride so there's the front facing camera on there and you can raise this thing up and you can rotate it like that and you can rotate the lens to get that perfect angle so you can actually face this back you know if you had some uh children in the back that you wanted to monitor or whatever you could look at them through there um, but this will also record whenever you're driving so in case you're in an accident or anything like that it's all on video and that comes with a 64 gig tf um, storage card right there um, come with a variety of mounting options which you know you could mount this thing in under five minutes it's pretty simple so you've got a, a dash mounting pad that you can place and then you can use this mount here with a suction cup and then you could also mount it to the windshield if you wanted to or you could suction cup this to that mounting pad um, wherever you want to which I might place it right there possibly and then you also have this mount here that allow you to mount it to your dash pad um, this is probably not going to work I mean maybe if you had it clear up there but that's kind of a reach I kind of want it a little bit closer um, I'll just have to play with that and see which mounting method I'm going to use but at least they give you the options um, you've got your your power cord here and then it also has another USB there that you can use to charge other stuff with, which I like. It doesn't tie up the whole 12-volt um, outlet for just one thing. So I'm going to figure out which way I'm going to mount this thing and get it mounted up. All right, so that's how I decided to mount it. I put the little mounting pad on the dash and then suction cupped it down. And man, does that thing take a hold. It's It's there. And then it's nice because I have already a power um, right there and it comes with quite a bit of cord. So it allowed me to tuck that down into that little um, tray right there. So I'm um, going ahead and lifted the camera up because I think it's going to need to be higher to get up over that mount right there. But looks pretty good right there. Let's turn this thing on. Oh, there we go. It's booting up. Ta-da! All right, let's get this thing all synced to my phone. All right, so I've had a week to kind of play around with the Car Pure Ride W903 and uh, had a chance to go through the manual and get everything working on here. I'm sitting here waiting on uh, Josh to get back with some parts, so I thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit more about this. Um, I've been driving around on the country roads in a a Ram 5500 and this thing hasn't moved. So if that doesn't tell you how solid of a mount that is, I don't know what does. Um, so I've had a chance to look at all the features on this thing. Right now you're seeing I'm hooked up with CarPlay. Um, if we go back to the smart screen, we have some options where we can go to settings, um, playback, where we can uh, play back the video that was being recorded from the, the front facing camera. Um, you can view the camera. There's the view of the camera right now. You can go to your Bluetooth volume. You got the 
Um, the screen will have auto brightness, so depending on how bright it is outside, it'll just automatically adjust the display, which is pretty cool. You can do um, Android Auto or CarPlay, so I have an Apple phone, so we do CarPlay. Um, it'll do AirPlay, so it'll um, do it wirelessly with an iPhone. If you want to do Android Cast, you have to be hooked up with a cable, um, but I have a Apple, so we're good to go on AirPlay. Audio output. So I choose Bluetooth audio so I can get my um, music to come through my speakers. I got a Bluetooth radio here. Um, you can also choose speaker. I'm not going to switch that, but anyway, there's a, a speaker on the back of the unit where it'll display sound if you want to. Um, you can go to FM and it will, um, you select the frequency you want to broadcast and transmit and you can dial your radio into that frequency and then you can pick up sound that way or you can use the auxiliary um, stereo cable. So we're hooked up to Bluetooth audio. I'm just gonna leave it on there for now. So if we wanna go to CarPlay, there you go right there. So we got phone maps, messages, and podcasts and I've got my YouTube music right here so we can listen to um, my YouTube music. You can also have a split screen you have your map up there, uh, nav directions, and your music right there. Also, you have a quick little icon where you can access the home, the camera, the brightness, and the Bluetooth, which is pretty cool. And you can actually move this around to where it's not in the way of stuff if you want to. But yeah, I've uh, used it quite a bit and uh, really like it so far. It's definitely nice to have a, a bigger screen you know this stock radio is not not the greatest so it, that really helps out all right so like the the front facing camera if we go to playback we can look at all the videos that were stored on there and you can also take photos see it's recording right now um, See it taking a photo. Also made a phone call, called the wife, and the sound quality was excellent. She said she could hear me um, crystal clear. So you can also use Siri with it. Hey Siri, message Zeth. What do you want to say to Zeth? Your YouTube channel is awesome. It says, your YouTube channel is awesome. Send it? Yes. Done. And then boom, I got a message. So that's pretty cool. So Siri works with it. All right, so that should do it on the review on this uh, Car Pure Ride W903. Um, if you guys are interested in buying one of these, I, I highly recommend it. This, if you don't have CarPlay or Android Auto in your vehicle and you kind of want to modernize your vehicle, it's really easy to do with one of these. Um, I'll give you guys a link. Go to the link in the description below. Um, if you use coupon code ZKMT, you will get $50 off your purchase on one of these. So make sure you check them out um, at carpuride.com. But let's get into the service truck. So the new truck is aluminum. So all my magnetic stuff is not going to be able to go on the doors. So that's going to be a little different. But we got to get all this these first two compartments into this compartment. Yeah. Oh, and check this out. Ta-da! LED lighted compartments with an LED light bar for the American Eagle drawer units. Isn't that sweet? So we've got three three inch, three fives and a seven. So we're gonna try to get everything from those two compartments into here. So we got all my Nipex and Snap-on pliers up here. Got all my half inch drive extensions and ratchets. I mean, it's, there's a lot of them in there. Got the first drawer. Got my air hammer and scrapers and punches and kind of your first drawer of randomness. Second drawer is screwdrivers and picks. Third drawer is 
ratchets. Now I used to have these all foamed in on the right hand side of the truck, but I thought I'd, you know, since we got a wider drawer, I could put in my Milwaukee ratchets in here, all the snap on ratchets down here, quarter inch ratchets all here and extensions, all your three eighths extensions, adapters and whatnots and crank turning tools and kind of some miscellaneous stuff there. Got the three eighths drawer here. Pretty standard stuff, really. Got another drawer of sockets, some half inch stuff. This thing I had sitting in the shelf on the other truck, but it will not fit on these shelves here. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sure this is not the way this truck's gonna be permanently arranged, but I just gotta get this stuff thrown in here real quick. More pliers, snap ring pliers and long needle nose pliers and pinch off pliers and brushes and stuff like that. We got the three quarter drawer. Found a place for all my PWZs to sit. Some big three quarter Allen stuff. My um, snap on three quarter ratchet head and breaker bar. And I was able to fit the handle up here. That was cool. So that's the three quarter handle. And then got all my three quarter sockets here, extra long 18 for the chopper drive on combines. So yeah, that worked out pretty good. Then up here is all drilling, extracting, tapping, that kind of category stuff up here. So it's a lot of drill bits and extractors. And oh, this is actually a stare at micrometers. Um, but yeah, there's tap, there's uh, thread files, drill bits, all kinds of stuff up there. Um, the only thing magnetic on this truck are actually these shelves. This is stainless. These are actually magnetic. So I've um, got a couple magnet trays up in there, dial indicator, a little quarter inch drive set. So these are my most used sockets and I want those readily available right there. So I've got three rails of my most used sockets and then I've got um, standard half inch right here. That's a set of 12 point half inch impact sockets there. Um, got my little Matco uh, wrench rack here with all my Matco. Uh, ratchet wrenches. I like to have a 13, uh, 10, 15, 18, all right here ready to grab real quick because you're always grabbing those wrenches. So I put those right there. Then here I got a micro screwdriver set and my uh, John Deere Flex probes and um, connector tools. And we got a Mighty Vac. We got gear wrench, three job pullers back here. Um, these are Tecton Long Allens, some grease circ fittings, tape measures, the power probe, um, open and short finder kit, 3-8 snap-on uh, torque wrench in there, snap-on uh, snap ring set in foam in there. Um, then we got the uh, power probe back there and then the gear wrench serpentine tool set. So. I got it all thrown in there. Now we got to work on the wrench drawers. So this is going to be a little bit of a pain because I have all these, you know, wrenches in foam, right? Those are my standard, but the metric wrenches are not. But I ordered a drawer unit for this cabinet here. It's, it's going to be a three. Can't figure out how to use this thing. There is going to be a three drawer unit American Eagle in here. And it's going to be a five inch drawer, a three inch drawer, and a three inch drawer. So I'm going to put all my wrenches in those three drawers. And then I'll have another shelf on top for some stuff. So I'm just going to have to throw all of that. Because there's a bunch of wrenches underneath the drawer too so basically i'm just gonna have to toss all that into there and ta-da and i forgot to mention i did get some drawer liner from amazon it's like four mil thick and i i put it over here on top of that box too but these are 
big wrenches and mostly all metric wrenches. There's some big standard wrenches back there and wrench extender and all that jazz. But I was able to pull the foam out of that drawer and just stick that up there for now. So this will be a whole lot nicer when I get those drawers because all of that will go in those drawers and then I'll have all this space to fill up here. Josh is getting a little rambunctious here. He's helped, he showed up and he's helping me a little bit. Um, we're going to try to squeeze the Milwaukee Packouts in here. We're going to see what happens, but they are not easy to get out of here. Basically, I got to take the shock off, fold this door, fold this out, and then I'll have to pull out each individual drawer because they're super heavy. And then we'll have to unlock them from the bottoms but we're also gonna have to fab that metal or that wood piece mm -hmm. to fit in that other truck. Mm -hmm. So let's get that done. Unfortunately, the pack out drawers will not fit in that compartment. It's 24 inches inside here and the pack out's only like 22 inches wide, but you can't get it through this opening of 19 inches. And no matter what you do, you can't get it in there, so. Uh, initially I was planning on putting it in the cab behind the seat. So I think that's what we're gonna have to go to now. So eventually I'm gonna be building a sub floor, kind of laying across here like this. And then you'll have room to tuck stuff under here, like torque wrenches and stuff. And then I can set my pack out drawers right here. And then the other side can just be a bunch of storage. So I think I'm just gonna set those in here for now. Well, it's just gonna have to go here for now. I'm gonna have to figure something out later, but you like my temporary seven inch oak block in there? Pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> and voila, got a brand new Wilton Vice mounted on there. Had to hog the holes a little bit on this mount to get this one to fit, but Joseph mounted that for me. Good job, buddy. Okay, so I just went ahead and put all my chemical stuff and shop rags in this compartment, you know, your brake clean and your contact cleaner and your multi-purpose lube and grease and all that stuff. Got zip ties here, room for expansion, room for expansion up here. Um, that's a little suction pump there. And then all your Loctites and sealants and stuff and funnels. And then I've got some empty tubs back there to put slimy things in. So I think we're gonna call that good for now. Now, we need to turn both of these trucks around so we can swap stuff from the, the right side. All right, so Joseph is working on getting everything out of the back of this truck and getting it into the bed of that truck. Right now, I'm trying to get everything from this cabinet, which there's, you know, this is where all my rigging and uh, there's hydraulic plugs and Milwaukee one inch and chain hoist and torch stuff. Um, all that I'm going to put into this compartment here, but I'm going to put new oxyacetylene and uh, torch tanks in here. And then you strap them down with this chain. So then I won't have the tanks in the bed anymore. So I'll have them in here and they got a nice little, uh, drop down box in here where you can put a, a taller tank in there. And then I can hang my, my hoses up on that hook right there. That's the plan. So torch stuff and then everything from there. Try to get in there and possibly a little bit of stuff in that cabinet too. Because all the Milwaukee stuff is going to go in that big cabinet. And then I still have one more right here where all your controls and your air stuff is so and i'm not sure what i'm going to put in there torch tanks are in there for now but i wanted some taller tanks but we're all out every torch tank that was the correct size that'd be up to here was empty so i just put those in there for now but the chain doesn't hit where it's supposed to so i'm gonna have to drill a hole down low down here so it can be properly strapped in there so i'll get that later well, I got that one emptied out. I still have a bunch of extra torch bottles and a fire extinguisher, but oh, there it is. All my lifting straps and chains, 
are all up here. All my ratchet straps and um, C clamps and pins and um, all my chain hoists and clevises and everything, and special tool plates, and like oscillation stops, stuff like that that I've made are up there. And then I had to sneak in this cabinet and put three pack outs there. Um, I put the, the Milwaukee one inch gun, fits perfectly into that cabinet there. So we still have all of this cabinet and all of that to get moved. The poor fav looks empty. I spent a lot of time cutting all that stuff out. But the fav is finally empty. Got everything just kind of thrown in here for now. I got a lot of work to do. All my Milwaukee stuff's in those two. All my hammers and pry bars. I got some drawer liner to take home. All that stuff. AC gauges and my scale. I got a big long pry bar and a big long sledgehammer in that hole. And now we're trying to Tetris everything in the back of the truck. Because I've got, this is the Kaizen tool foam that I'll be using on some stuff. And those will blow away. I need to take those home with me. So we're moving some stuff around so we can set those in there. But yeah, it's time to get on the road. I am tired. We're working late trying to get this done. Let's get everything in this truck so I can take it home and organize everything like I like it. My goodness, we got everything in the bed. It is all the way to the front. All right, well, it's time to get this bad boy home. I'm done for the day. All right, so I worked on the truck all weekend. Um, I got that sticker off the fender. I got the Sloan decals on and mounted straight. Um, let's see, I've shown all this side of the truck, but uh, look what came in. My drawer unit came in. So right now I'm currently going to install this three drawer unit into here and I had to pull everything back out there. But one thing I got done over the weekend, set all my wrenches here for now. I got the, the D-ring rail mounted there. Got some ladders strapped to it. Look how much more room I have in the bed now. Um, I ended up having to put one of the Milwaukee packout drawers in the bed because two of them in the cab was just too much in my opinion. So that one's just got nuts and bolts and hardware in it. So I don't really care if it gets wet. Um, I don't think it's going to get a whole lot of water in there. We'll see. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with my generator yet and my electrical cord reel. So I just got it kind of strapped down there for now. Um, I'm going to have to see what I'm going to do there. You know, comment below. Let me know what I should do or not do with that generator. I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on that. Um, I did figure out how to run the crane. And I figured out how to turn the air compressor on. So you have to use the crane remote in unlinked mode to go to the air compressor page. And then you turn the air compressor on with the remote. That took me a while to figure out. So I got that done over the weekend. And then I worked on foaming out all my Milwaukee tools. So I didn't have to foam out as much because I moved all my ratchets and 90 degree impact into the drawer on the other side. Um, but this took me about five hours. And then, of course, I foamed in. I just leave that there. That's a Milwaukee inverter there. Um, I foamed in all my pry bars, all the indexing bars, all the alignment punches and uh, snap-on pry bars. Um, the longest one I could put in here was this one. And then I got some brass punches, brass hammer, all my hammers and sledges. And then I moved all my really long bars into here. So I've got, oh, there's an indexing bar and some long air wands and 
sledgehammer. So I got all the really long stuff now in the bumper. And yeah, I, I really haven't touched those compartments yet. I'm still working on them, but everything's in there for now. I went ahead and I, I turned it sideways. I thought that was better. Um, but if I had two in here, that, that top of that box was like clear up here and I had to stand on this step to see what was in that box. So I didn't really like that. So I've just got the one, but this one has a bunch of electrical stuff in there that I don't want to get wet. Um, but that little sub floor that I had previously built in my Ford, it fit right in there and all I had to do was add one little leg to it. So it doesn't look the greatest for now. I might change it up, but it's solid. I've drove the truck around, it doesn't move. So um, got all my soft creepers and stuff in here that I can, that's good for my knees and laying on dirty surfaces and stuff so I don't get filthy. Um, got a, this is the grill cover for the front of the Ram and all the documentation for the, the bed and the crane and stuff, rapid charger, you know, rocket light. We got the big three quarter snap on torque wrench back here. We got another, uh, two other half inch torque wrenches on the other side. Um, let's open the other side. And we got in here, I got my, my tech bag here with all my electronics. So cab is done. All right, so we got the American Eagle drawer unit set into place. Um, I customized this drawer unit to have one five inch and two three inch drawers. So I'm gonna do standard wrenches, metric wrenches, then all my tall wrenches are gonna go in the bottom. Um, so we're getting it in here, getting it set up, getting everything all square. These plates on the top slide in and out and that allows you to um, come up to the sidewall and be able to bolt it in and then you torque those bolts down and that locks it in and then down here we've got some holes to drill through here but you got to make sure that the um the slides are straight you don't want them crooked like this so your drawers don't bind in and out so just getting everything lined up and squared and then we'll start drilling holes and put bolts in it okay i finally got this done Ta-da! got a astro pneumatic coolant pressure tester, gear inch slide hammer kit, my one inch Milwaukee's settled in there, my magnet trays, my grease gun, my tire inflator. Got the, uh, the drawer light all wired in. Got standard wrenches. Unfortunately, the foam would not fit in there. So I just got them on racks, metric wrenches. And big wrenches. This is why I wanted the five inch drawer so you could put the the big wrenches, you know, up to two inch in there. Got the PWZs in there. I moved them from the three quarter drawer into here. You know, wrench extenders and got a Sun X angle wrench set in there. But yeah, turned out to be pretty sweet. All right, what we're gonna do now is test out this crane operation and I'm gonna try to get this crane tucked in that hole right there to see if we can go into the grain tank with it.
And there you go. Dropped it right down to the fountain auger and snuck it through right underneath that heater. How sweet is that? Oh, that's gonna make my life so much easier. All right, now I can get show you the outrigger. So you got curbside and street side. So the this side will extend out like that. And the other side will go down. Oh, there it is. And we're a little unlevel there. We'll raise this side up a little bit. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Outriggers. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the process of switching service trucks over, and I hope you guys like my new truck. I know I love it. It's freaking awesome. Um, make sure you guys like the video. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel. It's free. And comment below. Let me know what I might have missed that you guys want to see more in depth on, and I'll try to get that content for you guys. But until next time, keep that green iron moving. <laughs>